Um, we need to write the equation. And it, I'm not specifying which equation. I'm just saying write the equation of the quadratic. Well, as we mentioned, last time we found that using the vertex form was the easiest, right? Because they gave us vertex, so we knew what h and k was. In here, they don't tell us which one's the vertex. They just say these three points lie on the line on the graph. So since I don't know what h and k is going to be for this one, I think this value is going to be a little bit hard for me to use. So I'm going to go ahead and go through this one, this equation. Now, what's difficult about this one, though, is we know x and y represent the coordinate points. But now, for standard equation, we have three variables. And one thing I keep on always saying to you guys, when you have three variables or three unknowns, you're going to have to have three equations. Um, now, so therefore, we need to th create three equations. Well, I have one set of xy's. I have another set of xy's. And I have a third set of xy's. So is it possible for me to plug in x, y into this equation three times to get three different equations? Yes, yes it is. So guess what? Let's have some fun. Let's do that. Yay. So we have 7 equals a times 0 squared plus b times 0 plus c. Does everybody see my equation number 1? Yes. Oh, I just plugged in x in for x and y in for y. Yes. OK. Number 2, we'll have negative 14 equals a times 7 squared plus b times 7 plus c. And number 3, I have negative 19 equals a times negative 3 squared plus b times negative 3 plus c. Does everybody see what I did? Just plug in x and y. That's all I did. Because that's all I had. That's all I knew. I only know x and y. So I wanted to plug them in for x and y. Um, now let's go ahead and simplify this. So. Let's go and simplify these equations. So equation number one, well, that goes to 0. That goes to 0. Negative 7 equals c. Cool. We now know what the value of c is. Number two, um, let's see. That's going to be, when I simplify this, I have negative 14 equals 49a plus 7b. And then c, we now know that c is negative 7, correct? So can I just write negative 7 here? OK. And then number 3, I have negative 19 equals 9a, because negative 3 squared is 9, um, minus 3b minus 7. Is everybody following me? Yeah. Now, fortunately, we don't have three equations. We know what c is. If we didn't know what c was, we would have to solve a system of equations with three variables, which in this class we do not teach anymore. So you guys kind of get a break because they, we are able to evaluate what c is. That's why I plugged in the value of c right there. Now, um, what I can basically do is add 7 to both sides. And the reason why I want to add 7 to both sides is because when we're solving an equation, we want to have our variables on the same side. I come up with an equation that looks, or a system that looks like this. 49a plus 7b equals negative 7. And negative, oops, I'm just rearranging them so the variable's on the left-hand side. 9a minus 3b is equal to negative 12. Does everybody agree with me what I did? Yes. Check my work. Now, I did easy systems of equations for other classes. So if you, this is kind of confusing, you want to remember how to do a, a basic system of equations, I'd go back and check those other ones. You guys get the hard one, though. But that's good, though, because you guys get to remember how to solve a system of equations when it looks something like this. You could use substitution. But I don't recommend using substitution unless one of your coefficients is 1, right? So the other method was to use elimination. But to use elimination, the coefficient has to be the absolute value of the coefficient has to be exactly the same. Do we have the same absolute value coefficient? No. So what we can do is we can make it by mul using multipliers. So I say, all right, what is the common multiplier between 7 and I'll, I'll eliminate the b. I'd much rather do that than 49. 21. So that means I need to multiply the top equation by 3 and the bottom equation by 7. I'm going to keep them as positive 3 and positive 7 because um, one's positive, one's negative. And I want to add the equation. So that makes it much easier. 
So when I go ahead and do this, so 49, that's going to be 98. That's going to be 147. So I have 147A plus 21B equals negative 21 all over um, 7 times 8, uh, 63, right? 63A plus negative 3, oops, negative, oh, I'm sorry, I forgot to multiply by 7, right? 63A minus 21B equals negative 84. Now that I have two, now I have the variables have the same number, one positive, one negative, I can just add the two equations. So that becomes 50, so that becomes 210. Those go to 0 equals 105, negative 105. Then I have the equation 210a equals negative 105. To solve for a, I have to divide by 210. Equals 1 half. And negative 1 half. Very good. Now, that's the value of a, though. We still need to figure out the value of b. So what we can do is go back to any one of these equations and figure what our, our value of b is. So I would recommend, uh, neither of them are really going to be fun. Um, let's use this equation, though. So I'll do 9 times 1 half minus 3b equals negative 12. Well, 9 times 1 half is just 9 halves. Minus 3b equals negative 12. Oh, it's a negative. You're right. Thank you. So that's a negative 1 half. So I have to add 9 halves. Add 9 halves. To make sure 12 is a fraction over 2, I need to multiply by 2 over 2. This is not a fun problem, is it? So therefore, I obtain negative 3b equals negative 24 over 2 plus 9 over 2. That becomes negative 13 over 2. Can we just subtract 1 and then 12? Um, yeah, I'm just, I mean, yeah, but you're, the problem is once you start getting the decimals, your coefficients you're going to have to write as fractions. So you're going to have to go back. Yeah. Okay. Then if you divide by negative 3, divide by negative 3, b is equal to negative 13 over 6, assuming my math is correct. Um, but what I will say, guys, is as you know, one thing, as I tell you guys, is preparing you guys in Algebra 2 honors for pre-calc is one thing. Fraction operations is huge to make sure you guys can apply this. And also, a lot of times, you're not going to have access to your calculator, so you want to make sure you can apply all this fraction stuff that I'm doing. So assuming I didn't make any, um, wait a minute. That's wrong, right? That should be 15. <coughs> For the first half. So it's negative 15 over 3, which you can divide a 3 into the top and bottom, right? So it actually becomes negative 5 halves. So I know what b is. I know what a is. And I know what c is. Can I now write find? Can you put that away, please? This, not, this would not be the best time for you to be doing that, especially if you were looking for retakes or extra credit or anything. So now we can say y equals a, which is negative 1 half, x squared, plus b, which is negative 1 half, so it's going to be negative 5 halves, x, and then plus c, which is minus 7. Did you guys see how I did that? Mm -hmm. Guys, I'll be more than happy to give you another problem that's easier. That was definitely a more difficult problem.